Hey everyone, welcome to part 83 of my Pokemon game series maturity. So in this video, we'll implement buying items from shop. So the user will be able to buy items from the shop like this. Alright, so let's look at how to implement this. You can support the making of this series by becoming a Patreon and get some cool rewards for it like access to the complete project files of the series exclusive tutorials that are not covered on YouTube and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So in the previous video, we have created this UI to list the items of the shop. So next, when we select an item and press Z, we should try to buy that item, right? So to implement that, we can add actions to the handle update of the shop UI, just like we do here for selling the item. So we can do the same thing for buying item from shop UI. But I'm not going to add it to the handle update function. Instead, I'll add it to the show function of the shop UI. So the show function is only called once. So it will be more efficient to pass the actions to the show function and then you can cache it into a private variable and use it from the handle update function. All right. So let's add the action to the show function. So first we need an action that will be invoked when an item is selected. So this action will also take the selected item as the parameter. So let me name this on item selected. All right, and by the way, to use the action, we have to import the system namespace. All right, so next, I'll also create the on back action. So next, we need to cache this actions to private variables so that we can use them from the handle update function. So let me create two private variables for this. All right, so first I'll create for the on item selected action, and then I'll create for the on back action. So now we can cache the parameters into the private variable. All right, so now in the handle update function, if the user presses the Z key, Then we can invoke the on item selected action. All right. So to this action, we also have to pass the selected item as a parameter. So we can get the selected item from available items of the selected item index. All right. So next, if the X key is pressed, then we can invoke the on back action. So let me go ahead and invoke it. All right. So now from the shop controller, when we call shop UI dot show function, we can pass the on selected and on back actions. And in the action, we can write the code to buy the item or go back from the buying state. So first, let me create a function to buy the item. So here I'll create a function called buy item. And this function will take the item to buy. All right. So this function is going to be very similar to the sell item function that we created in the earlier video. So let's go ahead and implement the buy item function. So at the start, I'll set the state to shop state dot busy so that nothing else will happen when we are buying the item. All right. And next, we need to show the count selector and let the user select the number of items they want to buy. So first, I'll show dialog saying how many would you like to buy? All right. 
and I'll pass false for the wait for input because we don't want to wait for the input before showing the count selector and I'll also pass false for the auto close because we should only really close this dialog once the user has selected a count. All right. So after this, we can show the count selector. So I'll call count selector UI dot show selector. So for the max count, I'll pass 100. So 100 will be the maximum items that we can purchase at once. And then for the price per unit, we can pass the price of the item. All right. And finally, we have to pass the on count selected action, which will give us the count that the user selected. So this action will give us the selected count. And what I'll do is here, I'll create a variable called count to buy and I'll set it to one by default. And from this action, we can set count to buy to the selected count. All right. So once we select the count, we can close the dialog by calling dialog manager dot instance dot close dialog. All right. So this will handle the count selection. So once we have the count to buy, we can calculate the total price by multiplying price of the item with count to buy. So let me store this in a variable called total price. And then we should check if the player has enough money in his wallet. So let me open up the wallet script. And in here, I'll create a new public function called has money. And this will take the amount to check as the parameter. So in this function, we just have to check if the amount is less than or equal to the money that the player has. All right, so we just have to return the value of this. So this will check if the player has this amount in his wallet. So now from the shop controller, we can check if the player has the total price of the purchase. So I'll call wallet dot instance dot has money and I'll pass the total price for the amount. All right. So if the player has the money, then we can proceed with the buying and otherwise we can just show a dialog saying you don't have enough money for that okay so if the player has the money then first we should show a dialog saying that it will cost this amount and we should give a yes or no choice to the user to let them decide whether they want to buy so we can show a dialog with the choice box for that. So we have already done this while selling the item. So in the sell item function, here you can see we are showing a dialog with yes or no choice before selling the item. So let's actually copy this piece of code to save time. And I'll paste it over here. All right. So let me just change the dialog. So here I'll just say, that will be this amount all right and we'll have the choice selected by the user in the selected choice variable so if the selected choice is equal to zero then that means the user selected yes so we can go ahead and buy the item by adding it to the player's inventory and we should also remove this amount of money from the player's wallet right so first let me add to the player's inventory by calling inventory dot add item so we can also pass the count of items to add so i'll pass count to buy for that all right so next we should remove the total price from the wallet 
so i'll call wallet dot instance dot take money and i'll pass the total price for the amount so finally i'll also show a dialog saying something like thank you for shopping with us all right so this is all we have to do to buy the item so at the end of this function we can set the state back to buying so that user can go ahead and select another item to buy all right so let's call this function when the user selects an item and press it so we can call it from the on item selected action but we can't pass this function directly because this function is a coroutine so we'll have to create another lambda function over here and then call the start coroutine function to call the buy item coroutine okay so this lambda will get the selected item in the parameter so we have to pass that to the buy item function all right so next we should also pass the on back action so we haven't created that yet so let me just pass a function called on back from buying and let's go ahead and create this function so in this function we can close the shop ui and go back to the menu state so we can call shop ui dot close function to close the shop ui okay we haven't created the close function in shop ui yet so here let me create a public function called close and from this function i'll call game object dot set active false to disable the shop ui all right so now we can call the close function to close the shop ui and we also have to close the wallet ui right we are showing the wallet ui when we open the shop ui so we also have to close that so once we close all the ui then we can go back to the menu state so i'll call the start menu state coroutine to go back to the menu state all right so that's all we need to do so now we should be able to buy an item when we select it so let's go to unity and test it all right so if i select an item first i can choose the number of item that i want to buy so let's say i want to buy four portions all right so now four portions should be added to our inventory and four hundred dollars was deducted from my wallet all right so next let's try buying something that will cost more than six hundred dollars so two max portions will cost thousand dollars so if we try to buy that we'll get a dialogue saying we don't have enough money for that but if i just try to buy one max portion then i should be able to buy it all right so we have implemented buying items successfully so i stop the video here so if you think this video is helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out so i'll see you in the next video